female pattern hair loss is a huge problem for a lot of women. It affects roughly 50% of the population by the time women get to be postmenopausal, but it affects a lot of young women as well, and it's a very complicated matter. So unlike androgenetic alopecia or male pattern hair loss, when you can look at a patient and tell right off the bat that this is a genetic problem that you're treating, we don't always know when we look at a woman who has thinning whether or not this is a treatable, medically treatable problem, an endocrine problem, a nutritional problem. There are a lot of things that can cr contribute to thinning in women. So it typically requires a great deal more diagnostic acumen. You don't want to just head straight to surgery. And in fact, there's a significant number of women who are not good surgical candidates or whose hair loss could actually be made worse by proceeding with surgery. So I will always tell a woman that they need to get a certain amount of underlying evaluation for blood test to exclude treatable things like thyroid disease, uh, selenium deficiency, magnesium deficiency, zinc deficiency. We'll look at the easily treatable causes of female thinning. And if we don't identify something and they have a sufficient amount of donor, good donor hair, uh, concentrated donor hair, and they have a pattern that's consistent with androgen-mediated hair loss, which can happen in women, that's a woman who may actually be a surgical candidate. Women who have uh, altered hairlines because they've undergone surgery, those are women who are good surgical candidates. But women who are diffusely thin do not have a good donor supply and surgery could actually catalyze more hair loss. And that's the woman for whom alternate therapies such as um, minoxidil, topical minoxidil, possibly oral finasteride, possibly platelet-rich plasma, they can find benefit from those types of approaches rather than surgery.